Hello, my astrology friends and family. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today it's one of my favorite things to do an astrology tutorial. And the topic is, are you on the light or dark side? How to see it in your horoscope? Well, it's not as simple as are you on the light or dark side in this incarnation, but more like, are you into a pivotal incarnation in this lifetime where during which time you're deciding whether you're going the right way or the left way. <laughs> There's something in the cult knowledge now the right way is the way to higher vibration. The left way is the way where you take the easy way down through temptation, through fear. It's not exactly easy, it's more painful, but where you sometimes even consciously choose the dark side. And sometimes you do it unconsciously where you slip into resentments, into anger, into the more lower manifestations of humanity. And there are certain pivotal incarnations which can be seen in the horoscope during which you can see what side you're going to, or if it's such a pivotal life when you're being tested. And it's, we constantly in each lifetime we're having some big tests to decide to take, but certain incarnations are very decisive what side are you going on, the shadow side or the light side? They're very determining, very defining. Uh, they're called like a pivotal incarnations, let's say, like when you're on a crossroad. And there is a way to see that, and I'll show you how to see it. It's shown through constellations, through certain positions in the zodiac sign. And all of this I learned through Rumen. Rumen Kolev is one of my teachers. He did a special seminar, which was uh, six weeks long, especially on that scene. It's called Apollonian Astrology. If you want to check that webinar, everything, it's a course, everything I'm talking to you about, like almost 80% is, I took it from his course and he discovers his knowledge from ancient texts. So you won't find this information anywhere else. He translates ancient uh, Latin texts and uh, Greek texts from ancient astrology, Hermetic and Apollonian astrology, something we've forgotten, and he uh, updates it for modern life. So the knowledge that I give you and that my guests give you, it's something you will not find anywhere else. Uh, not only online, but on books or whatever. <laughs> Let's just speak Latin and Greek. So this will be really fascinating to do. And by the way, Rumen is starting a new course uh, this July towards the end, which will be in primary directions. Again, this is a method that he rediscovered himself. You won't find courses, or if you find any courses on primary directions, they're not from the person who uh, recreated the algorithm, which was lost for quite a long time to humanity. And that's Rumen Kolev again. And he revived the art of primary directions. It's predictive methods for the future. But now let's start about what is your horoscope like, more like? You know, some people have clearly defined horoscope where they're, um, and their life shows it, where they're choosing to be naughty in this lifetime, let's say, or to play shadow. <laughs> to Their shadow is pretty powerful and they embrace it and they choose it. It's a life, you know, it's an experience. And usually if you embrace it in this lifetime, you will carry on in the next lifetime unless again, there is a decisive. Uh, uh, incarnation where you can define yourself on which side you are. Well, some people go into their shadow side unknowingly. You know, when people experience pain, uh, too much pain, or when they experience too much temptation, um, oftentimes people can get embittered, can become even um, destructive, even evil, you know. As you know, many children as little who are not loved and who are being abused, they can, not many, but certain group, they can turn into serial killers or abusers of some sort. So uh, sometimes this is, we have pivotal lifetimes where we're given extreme situations where our inner demons rise from the surface of many past lifetimes. When we are uh, confronted with challenges that can feel a bit beyond human you know, possibility where lives are much more turbulent, where there is a lot more temptation on one hand, this is one side of the deal we'll speak about, where there's a lot more doubts and fears and worries, um, insecurities or pain. So I'll show you how to see this in the horoscope, how the Roman Kolev taught me, according to ancient Apollonian astrology. This is, you know, not, not even Babylonian, Apollonian, that's Greek astrology. And when you're in such a lifetime, uh, 
it's very easy to slip into answer aggression with aggression, uh, hurt with hurt, to close yourself off, uh, to become so fearful or pain that um, let's say you go into your shadow role, into a shadow role, you know, embittered, sad, or uh, just given onto all temptations and all your desires. So we'll see if you're in the incarnation where you'll be, where you have such tests of either fears and uh, when you have tested, which side do you decide? Well, some people, they can go through the biggest most difficult circumstances or temptations and they'll still stay good people even become kinder. So these are lifetimes when you define yourself and we'll look at a few examples. It's a lot of fun guys to check this out. I mean, not to point a finger at someone and say, you see you're evil, not at all. We're approaching this with compassion. You'll see some of the most advanced people like Florence Nightingale talking spiritually who did so much for humanity, they'll be born with some of the really hard positions. Uh, for They'll be confronted with the dark side of life, with the death, with destitute, with poverty, uh, with abuse. And what did they do? They turned it around. They created um, order out of chaos and pain, while others would succumb to the chaos and pain. It doesn't mean the evil, no soul is evil internally. It means they chose, maybe they're not a strong souls, you know, but we're given occasionally such lifetimes where the light and the darkness battle. In the other lifetimes, and you see in certain horoscopes, where there's a lot of light. It's like this person's not gonna have so many temptations. They're not gonna have so many inner battles and conflicts or so external, let's say, confrontations with the dark side where they have to decide and define themselves. And when there's a lot of goodness in them as well, it's kind of like probably they've worked in past lifetimes on that a lot and they've, there's much more peaceful lifetime, let's say, sometimes even boring. <laughs> you see there's some clearly defined people like that. Well, there's some clearly defined people that are very much in the dark with not much light to help them, not much light. Uh, as I'll show you the both sides of the easy and the hard ones to, to, to help them, constellations and so on. Uh, and they are, um, they sometimes they're real shadow players, <laughs> you know. Um, okay, and sometimes you see horoscopes where you see both the light side and the dark side, and there's a big battle. I'll show you my horoscope. <laughs> and uh, it's like that they used to call me. Uh, the nun prostitute at high school. And I'm like, why? Because you dress like a prostitute, but you live like a nun. And I was always tempted. There was so much temptation in my life. And you'll see this as well. So there are two sides of the shadow. One is the temptation side, which is symbolized by a few things. The temptation is when, you know, there might be temptations in your life into drugs, food, cheating, lying, power. Think, pick, choose your pick, you know. And this, these things are given to you or, uh, and you're tested again. Are you going to succumb to that all the time repeatedly? Of course, you can do it one or two, three times, but you might stop yourself at a certain time so you, the light wins. So the temptation is represented by Rahu, the North Node. In ancient astrology as well, they used it. And Roman said Rahu represents, he calls the dark side Echidna. In ancient astrology, they called it Echidna from Greek mythology. And whenever you see Rahu, Rahu is very strong. Rahu is on the ascendant. Rahu basically on the angles, close to MC, IC, ascendant, descendant, is very strong. North not close to an angle, there will be temptation in your lifetime. It's a pivotal cardinal reincarnation where there will be a lot of, it's a karmic node. Rahu and Ketu, the North Node and South Node, are represented in Vedic astrology as demons. They're demonic beings. They push our evolution a lot. That's why in the West, we love the North Node. It's evolution, progress, but it's also a lot of temptation. New things is like, ah, the, the rack has the feeling the grass is green on the other side, whatever it is for, whether it's money, whether it's another partner, whether it's, oh, in your career, oh, I want a different career, more power, or in the 11 pounds, rack is like, Oh, I fulfill one wish. I want the next, the next, the next. So you kind of like there's this greed in Rahu and insatiability. But there is temptation there. And are you going to succumb? So if Rahu is strong, you have more than normal amount of temptation in this lifetime. And uh, 
not only temptation, but this kind of Raku is strong, as I said, if it's on an angle or with the sun or moon or with a few planets in your horoscope. The sun and moon or the angles is the most powerful, but also with the ascendant will wake and be powerful. Then another representation of desire uh, and the temptations and going to the dark side or slipping into, let's say, into your shadow. Manifestation is Lilith. What we know in Western astrology is Lilith. In ancient astrology, they also used it. And it was called a hidna. <laughs> so similar, you know, Lilith is the dark side of, of the moon. The, the Lilith and a hidna, whatever they call it, is not particularly a planet. It's a position in your horoscope. You'll find it anywhere you do your chart, astro theme, astro.com. It's the furthest point of the ecliptic of the moon from the earth. Uh, because the moon is very much important in this case. And, and Lilith is one point through the moon. And again, you see we're using the nodes of the moon, Raku and Ketu, and the perigee and apogee of the moon. So the furthest and closest point. These are all connected to the moon, as you'll see. These, this is the moon is our, let's say, more like our instinctual animal nature. That's why we're looking at those points. Um, and the moon is connected to the past and to the dark and to the night. It's very feminine energy, but the feminine side has always been associated a bit with the darkness <laughs> and with the, you know, mother cult. Uh, but the moon is definitely represents our subconscious, the past. That's why we're using those points of the moon, the north node, the south node, Lilith. Uh, so check in Lilith. And also there is another one, Selene, which is the closest point of the moon. The ancient used that one as well, again, as a point of where there is some danger there. Actually, Western astrology now says Selene is very positive, is an angel like, but the ancient said the apogee, perigee of the moon were forces of strong psychic and energies where we can be influenced uh, into the darker side. Selene and Lilith, Lilith is the temptation, Selene, Selene, Selene. The closest point of the moon is more like the fears and phobias, the fears, uh, insecurities, those, this kind of, this more of this energy rather than temptation, which can lead again to, to someone choosing the dark side. And the south node of the moon has again that similar energy. So if you see the south node of the moon with sun, moon, or with the angles, then there will be more insecurities, more doubts, more fears. Let's call it like that. Fierce, again, this can lead someone to the dark side or this can lead someone to overcome the dark side, but there's a more of a fair share in this lifetime of such experiences. So check Lilith, if you can, Celine. I think it's always the opposite side of Lilith as well, a bit there like two points, if one part is, I think so. Not sure, check it. But uh, I work with Lilith and with the notes and I can tell you this is truly the case. So are they angular with the sun of the moon, the uh, Lilith and the south and north node? I would also include Pluto, hard aspect from Pluto to the sun, to the ascendant. To, one is really working to overcome the animalistic side. Pluto is the survival planet. Basically it rules the reptilian brain, just like Raku. It's very much about desires, deep desires, obsession, uh, very much about addictions, very much about the really raw, raw desires, very primal, primitive desires. And a Pluto hard aspect with the sun, with the moon, on an angle, means that someone has a fair share of that energy. There are some really great things about Pluto, I can say, but we're talking now about the dark side. So one will experience some of the more extreme sides of life death, abuse possible, you know, with Pluto, not their own death, uh, or kind of danger, even. the rougher side of human life, the more abusive, the darker. And uh, again, uh, do you come out, out of this pure and still good hearted? Do you come embittered and evil and broken or addicted, you know? So check out Pluto, though, is it strong? So the more you have of those, <laughs> the crazy it gets. And then the ancients, so Roman, we don't talk about Pluto, but he talked about the others, and then he said the invisible planets. The more invisible planets you have, which means they're close to the sun. And I'll show you in a little bit. So usually Venus, Mercury often might be invisible, but sometimes they can be more planets. So the more invisible planets you have, so if Saturn, Jupiter, or Mars are close to the sun, 
These are only the ones that can be visible. Uh, the more hidden things there are, the more uh, subversive things might be happening in your life, just like invisible Venus can indicate affairs and so on. So uh, you see a lot of politicians, including current president of the state, whatever, they have a lot of invisible planets. They do something, um, you know, and when you do a lot of things invisibly, they can be temptation or they can be, you know, certain dodgy things. So are you going to succumb to that? Are you going to succumb? Because you can do a lot of things invisible and not be spotted because those planets are invisible. Are you going to succumb to the temptation to go rogue, to go to the dark side? So that's another thing to consider. And then there are a few signs and constellations. There is a difference between signs and constellations that indicate the darker side. And if you have, so in Apollonian astrology, they call them all, all of those things, they call them, uh, uh, he, and uh, they gave it the, I'll call it like the goddess Kali in Vedic astrology, all of those positions, they gave it to the dark side. So there are a few positions. So for example, if you have strong planets in Scorpio, you might have a few planets, even one planet, the Scorpio, the Scorpio sign we're talking, this is a position that there is strong temptation and extremes to experience. Again, the correlation with Pluto here, we see. So check a horoscope, is there strong Scorpio, maybe Scorpio ascend them. Moon in Scorpio is very powerful for this. Like a pivotal life when one is deciding when they will, they will be met with more darkness and they have to whether affiliate themselves with it or fight it and pass on the other side. Um, and so if you can see planets in the sign Scorpio, but the ancients, according to Apollonian astrology of Hermes, it was given in ancient books, gave us a few constellations, not just the 12 signs that the planet, the sun is moving through, but actual constellations, there are 72 constellations, and they can be projected onto the ecliptic, and I'll give you the degrees for the on, so you can check your horoscope to see that. So there's, you'll see three positions that are very interesting, Vedic astrology talks about them, that uses sidereal astrology. This is where the fire and water constellations meet, where the water constellations meet the fire constellations. They're actually, it happens now, if you're using tropical astrology around the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, 24th degree of each fire signs. So around 22, 23, 24 degrees, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, if you're using tropical astrology, check if you have something there. Because this is where the constellations behind those signs, they meet the fire and water constellations. And there's something about really shifting primary gears when you move from the water constellation to the fire constellation. Um, and so because when those two points, they call them like karmic knots. There is some karmic knot to untie in this lifetime. It's something that you've done repeatedly, but you're moving into, you're given a chance to move from the heavy energy of the water, because water is a bit heavier, into the lighter, much lighter energy of the fire. And when water and fire meet, and we're talking the constellations behind the signs, which are much more deeply spiritual, they, they describe the path of the soul, the constellations behind, while the signs that we use in tropical zodiac, in Western astrology, they're much more earthy. They're the local Earth zodiac. They have the same names, Aries, Sign, and Aries constellation of the Ram, but they, are, um, they work on different levels. They're like holograms within holograms. The tropical zodiac is much more earthy. With the tropical zodiac, looking at the chart, you can say, oh, this guy, this guy is going to have a blonde wife. He's going to drive a blue car. He'll have two houses, very material things. That's what we're interested in most of the time. That's what people go to astrologers for. How should I position my business to be successful? What career should I do? Very specific, more tangible, earthy things. While the sidereal zodiac, which is the constellations with the 12 names, the same 12 names as the zodiac, but now they're moving further and further away they're drifting apart it describes the path of the soul and the spirit and what happens with the soul between incarnations because it's not tied to the earth it's the constellations beyond while the tropical zodiac is tied to the earth because it's determined between uh, from the 
the seasons, the tropical zodiac is determined by the solstices and equinoxes of the sun, the path of the sun in relation to the earth, while the 12 constellations, they're the master zodiac behind the tropical zodiac, which is the earthy one, the uh, western one, the tropical, sorry, the sidereal ones, which is the actual constellations there, they're the, like the father figure of that. And they, they speak about the mysteries of the soul and the invisible. That's why looking at the journey of your soul, we're gonna pay attention to constellations as well, not just to the tropical signs, but I'll give them the degrees in tropical signs, but I'll explain you the stories of the constellations. So there is something about those degrees which currently fall in the fire signs, those 72 years, those 100 years around us in around the 22, 23, 24, 25 degrees of the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, where the actual constellations behind them, fire and water meet. And what happens when fire and water meet? Big steam, it's turbulent. It's volcano falling in water, you know? So there is a lot more turbulence there, some karmic knot to untie, to solve. And water is the element of washing away the past fire is the future. So trying to really kind of, this is a pivotal lifetime if you have planets there or send them even. Um, when you're doing some huge gear shift, passing through much thicker matter, being an option, be given an option to pass through much lighter consciousness or matter, whatever you want to call it, but it's turbulent and it's hard as hell. And actually what Apollonian astrology tells us about those degrees, I'll share my screen with you now. And you'll see why they're so, um, let's say, this top one. Okay. I hope you see me. Stellarium. I want to share what exactly follows what I learned from Roman again. Again, if you want to study this course much more in depth rather than this quick video I'm doing, check out the course. I'll put the link below, Roman's Apollonian Astrology course, plus the new course that is coming. The things that I learned from Roman blow me away. If you want to be astrologers that know things that no one else knows, these are the courses to take, Roman's courses, because I... I think so much about the things he tells me and I discover such incredible things. So let's start with those very pivotal points where there is a big battle between light and darkness, between um, good and evil. And if you're born with positions there in your horoscope, and I gave you the degrees approximately of that, but I'll tell you anything from 20 degrees, uh, 21, two degrees in the fire signs currently tropical till the first two, three degrees of the earth signs, tropically I'm speaking. So areas from 20, 21, areas degrees to two, three degrees Taurus, tropically. And then uh, Leo from 21, two degrees tropically to two, three degrees Virgo. And then Sagittarius from 21, two degrees Sagittarius to two, three degrees Capricorn. This is a battle of the souls. But you see that it's actually, this is an area I'll show you because the actual, not only is it where the fire and water constellations meet behind that sign, uh, and there is like a battle if the soul will transition into lighter matter from water and the astral and the desires to extricate themselves from the desires and to sacrifice them on the fire of, in, in the sacrificial fire to burn, you know, to burn dross and to be lighter. Sometimes, you know, when this happens. So there is a big battle going on for the soul of such a person. Uh, but you see that exactly at those pivotal points where those constellations meet, there is monsters. Apollonian astrologers show, show us and look at that. So this is the actual constellations. This is the ecliptic, the red line where the planets are moving. So as you can see here, exactly between Leo and Cancer, which currently falls pretty much in the sign of Leo mostly, and a little bit into the tropical sign of Virgo. You see how they've moved past each other, the constellations and the signs, they don't correspond anymore so much, but there is, it's not per se the Leo and Cancer that has this difficult energy, there is a monster right here, and it's called the constellation Hydra. 
there are a few monsters in the sky and where they project on the ecliptic, it shows like battle for the soul between light and darkness. The constellation Hydra is a huge snake and Hydra is much longer. It goes into Virgo, which is constellation Virgo, which would be Libra tropical. But the most important point of it is the head, the head of the snake. And it pretty much falls over the sidereal cancer zodiac. <laughs> you see, and the head is very much between cancer and Leo. Say so dearly, which will be mostly in the tropical sign of Leo. <coughs> Sorry about that. So you'll notice some Leos, especially those that are after 15 degrees, they were tropically, you know, the second part, they might have a big uh, battle within themselves. And especially if the sun falls in those points, in those fire signs that I'll talk where the uh, monsters are. The sun is indication of the hero, the light. So that when the sun falls in those close to the ecliptic where those monsters are, there is an epic battle happening in this lifetime in this incarnation of the life of the person. They'll confront, confront the dark side and the inner hero has to choose the light or the darkness. If there are too many such dark positions, honestly, to be fair, it's almost impossible. Sometimes a person lives a life in the dark and in the shadow, sometimes many of those lifetimes. Eventually, each one of us will come into the light, but it might take a few million years for some of us of incarnations. So you see, you notice that people with uh, tropical Leo later, or if you're using sidereal sign, you know, between Leo and Cancer, that's where the constellation Hydra is. And as you'll see, my moon falls exactly on the star Hydra on its head. So there's temptations there as well. My moon falls there, it's also a star of astrology, it's a cult, but there's temptations and it's a star of addictions, it's a star of alcoholism and things like that. There can be problems with that poisoning. When you see some important people after that, that day, <laughs> uh, this was someone whose son is right on uh, the constellation of Hydra, my dad. <laughs> He's really very between the light and the dark <laughs> in this lifetime. His son is pretty much on the head of Hydra, very, very close uh, so in the constellation of Cancer in the Neotropity. So that's one position that is very hard and that it shows battle of lightness and darkness. It can show really also this position between uh, Leo and Cancer. So here really, well, these are the degrees, the last degrees of Leo tropically, even the beginning of Virgo tropically, because there is this monster there. And as I said, it's very much connected also to poisons and so on, and temptations. Then the other place where the two signs, fire and water meet, look at that, is between Sagittarius and Scorpio. And we have another monster there, the ancient uh, Apollonian astrology tells us that the tail of the scorpion is very dangerous. That's where it distinguishes, it's a monster. Actually, the moon currently is right there, you see. While we're shooting this video, this is funny, that we'll be shooting the video when the darker side of the, the moon illuminates those topics, right at the sting of the scorpion. So actually, the beginning of the constellation of Sagittarius and the end of Scorpio is the sting tail of the scorpion. It's a very dangerous uh, area. Again, the fire and water meet, but there is another monster energy there. Plus, this is the galactic center, guys, between Sagittarius and Scorpio's tail. We're talking constellations here. This is the galactic center. Anyone that has planets there, tropically translates Western astrology from around the 22nd degree in Sagittarius to the first two, three degrees in Capricorn. If you use tropical astrology, and most of you, I know you do, the Western astrology, you look for planets from around the last 10 degrees of Sagittarius, the first two, three, four degrees of Capricorn. That's where the sting of the Scorpion is behind. We're looking at the pictures behind the actual constellations and the galactic center. There's very powerful energies there. As with all monsters, monsters carry powerful energy and that energy can be transformed for something incredible is that if the spirit is strong to overcome the pain, the temptation, the darkness there, then it can be turned for the highest good. And it's very turbulent lifetimes. Someone who has the moon or ascendant or sun around those degrees, 
the, the galactic center and the telescope of the galactic center is again, it's not like a monster in ancient astrology that eats everything up. It's like a black hole. We know now there is a black hole, but that's where everything comes from as well, where everything, this black hole uh, regurgitates everything and create and everything up in our solar system, not solar system, galactic system spins around it. But this is a monstrous, crazy, color-like, uh, energies, goddess of destruction and creation, and it's, it, it carries connotation of powerful destruction, the galactic center and recreation. So that Scorpio, the end, they're pretty much in the same place here between the, you know, the of the Sagittarius and the and the sting of the Scorpio. So there is poison. So those people can experience a lot of poison, temptation, scary things, or you know, it's very sexual as well. It was very a lot of destruction and recreation. So if you see powerful positions there, the desires, and we'll see after that. That that's a, a very turbulent lifetime, pivotal lifetime where you're deciding: Are you on the light or dark side? It is testing and temptations. Can you overcome your fears and so on? And then let's see between the other fire and water sign, there is another monster. Actually, there are a few monsters and they will all cover them. Here it is. Here it is, the constellation of Aries and Pisces. Again, it's a karmic knot where they're meeting here. Oh, it's funny enough, we're doing the video and Mars is right there on this point between the Aries constellation and Pisces constellation. <laughs> Incredible. Well, we were meant to do this video. And and there is a monster right between them, the head of Cetus. It was a monster in Apollonian astrology. It's a monster that is this, the, it's the whale that ate Noah in the Bible as well. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a constellation that it's very much about very powerful desires again, very powerful fears. And uh, I have it right on my son. So I have one, the head of Kidra on my moon, and then two, my son, which is the sun is the hero's journey, confronting a monster here, Cetus. It's invisible, it's water, it's a water monster. It very much kind of talks about our inner demons, our inner, and might be outer things as well. But uh, it follows approximately using tropical zodiac, this monster. From around the degree, let me see, Cetus from around 20 degree, 21 degree in Aries, goes to two, three degrees in Taurus. So the last 10 degrees of Aries, the first two, three degrees of Taurus, uh, they're under the influence, uh, tropically talking, under the influence of Cetus, otherwise it's between the constellation Aries and Pisces. And not only that, but within those degrees, there is another, uh, no. Yes. So you see how the three monsters exactly where the fire and water signs are meeting. Very turbulent, tumultuous energies. Um, that's why if you have planets there, especially Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or Ascendant, Rilla, will a very pivotal incarnation. Battle of light is in darkness. Sometimes you can go into the dark world. And there are a few other representations of the dark side according to Apollonian astrology in the sky, and I'll show them to you. One is, uh, oh, go, of course, oh, go. Here it is. If you can see, oh, go is here per in the constellation of Perseus. Here it is. He's holding the head of a Medusa Gorgona. You know the story where they chop the head of the monster with the snakes. There is a, the story involves a lot of abuse as well because she was raped and turned into a monster and blah, 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 poor her. Then killed in her head with snakes or whatever. But there is also, to lose one's head, it's also a start of addictions, temptations, very vi violence as well, very tumultuous, crazy uh, passions and, uh, and sometimes tragedies that one is confronted for war and death and as, as you see, Florence Nightingale has her moon and sun there. So she was surrounded by death and such kind of monstrosities that she turned, you know, she, she experienced them, yeah, but she did not succumb to that darkness and have post-traumatic stress or enter into some kind of a dysfunctional 
lifestyle she overcame it and she created ordering to that chaos. And there is, so that falls currently around 22, 3, 4, 5, 6 degrees in Taurus. Otherwise, in the constellation, it's at the end of Aries, the start of Taurus constellation. And the tropical zodiac in 4, 25, 26 degrees Taurus. Write those points down. We will be checking charts after that. Write everything I've been telling you. And then there is another point that is a bit more dangerous that can be tempting to go to the dark side, that there is more tumultuousness, drama, pain. It's called the Pleiades. They call the seven weeping sisters. They're close to the constellation of Taurus. Here it is. They're like a little, quite a few stars. You, if you look at them in the sky, you can see like a cluster of stars that are not very bright. Here they are, Pleiades. The weeping sisters, I know a child that has the, their son there in the 12th house, right on the Pleiades. And his dad died a few months ago when the child was born, just three or four months after the child was born in a car crash. So it already shows in his horoscope some tragedy and tears connected to the father, the son. Uh, I'm not saying everyone who has their son on the Pleiades will experience this, but currently the Ple Pleiades, Anyone born in the last 100 years or in the next 100 years, the Pleiades fall in the last degree of uh, Taurus, 29 degree of Taurus, maybe 28, 29 degree of Taurus, and in the first two degrees of Gemini, zero, one, two degrees of Gemini, tropically speaking. So if you have from 28, 29 Taurus, to the first couple of degrees in Gemini, even three, it's close to the Pleiades. And Pleiades is the star of witches, a cult. You'll see after that, when you look at charts, quite a few people, they, and someone who practices has a cult powers. They can have powers that they're born with, to mesmerize, to, to have power over others. So this is a cult energy. And even to, to do some kind of magical stuff, you know, you see some powerful leaders and I'm, I bet my ass they're involved in the cult, as you will see. So sometimes when you're involved in the cult, there's a big temptation to go to the dark side, to use the powers and the knowledge that you learn for your own personal benefit. And then there is another, I think another one, representation of the darker force that, uh, just a second. Where is it? That, and you recognize immediately the symbol is the symbol is Capricorn. The Capricorn sign, not all of Capricorn, the horns of Capricorn. Have you seen a symbol of a horned goat? Well, that's, <laughs> that's a very occult degree. Currently, it falls around the beginning of Aquarius, four to nine, 10 degrees in. Uh, two, okay, two, three, two, seven, eight, nine degrees Aquarius tropically. But say, dear really, these are the horns of the goat. So the constellation behind the tropical Aquarius nowadays is that describes the path of the soul is Capricorn. And exactly, not all Capricorn, just four or five degrees between the horns of the Capricorn. Well, here the Capricorn is, usually the Capricorn is depicted in a little bit of a different way. I can show you here. You see, here is the horns of the Capricorn. So that's around eight degrees. So zero, let me see what it is in tropical. And you just put it to tropical. Yeah, from around one degree Aquarius to around eight degrees Aquarius, tropically. One to eight degrees Aquarius. So the beginning of Aquarius is where the horns of the uh, the horns of the goat is, and it's a symbolism of Satanism. Some, but in the ancient Aquarian astrology said this is a cult knowledge again, a cult powers uh, knowledge, and this occult knowledge can be transferred if one is seduced into a dark side to use it to mislead others, sometimes even unconsciously to use knowledge to abuse it, or sometimes it can be used for the highest good of others, and. Uh, you will see how, so that's another degree to be a bit careful. Of course, it makes you very horny. One can use the divine horns, the horns of the God, divine reproductive energy for uh, sex magic and so on. 
of, of course, it can be used for highest group, or it can be used for, it's kind of pagan stuff there, a bit, or it can be used for power and whatnot. And sometimes it's on a small level, it has nothing to do with the cult powers. It's just that one succumbs to the temptations of the world, the horn gold, you know, the, the devil, the temptation. Well, not for a simple person, I'm talking for a normal person. Um, and so these are the, the degrees to be careful a bit about. And I want to show you also a few degrees. Let me stop sharing this. So we'll talk about the light side after that very quickly. So write those degrees, set us the degrees, the sign Scorpio, and so on. And then here's the light side. The light side has also its representation. If the sun is strong, the sun is strong in fire signs, for example. The sun is strong close to the midheaven, on top of the horoscope. The sun is close. To close to the ascendant around sunrise, maybe in the 12th house, when it is still strong. Uh, sun is strong in fire signs, you know. Uh, also in the fifth and ninth house, it is strong trying on houses. So, strong sign, what is the light side? It's connected to the lightness, to the light, to the being easy to make the right choice, to act from inspiration, not to succumb to temptation, to be the hero. The strong sun always helps with the light side. There's another position, it's a bit hard for me to explain it, but that's when Mercury is in the position of Apollo. When Mercury is rising before the sun, it's a morning sign. It's a morning star that's also a sign of the light. And especially if it's visible, that's a sign that the light can win. But there are a few constellations that the ancients, that women taught us, gave that they're of the light. Uh, definition and i'll tell them to you quickly one of them is speaker which falls in the constellation of the virgin currently falls at 24 degrees in libra 23 degrees libra so give it two three degrees or to those things that i give you the exact degree of speaker is 23 is the star of mother mary is in the virgin the constellation of the virgin it's a spiritual star like princess diana has the star on the mid heaven her reputation was angelic very low uh, like a mother to the whole, whole, whole country. So if you have your midheaven, sun or ascendant or moon in those degrees, they become, you know, the, you have a lot of light and goodness and, and it's easy for you to be good and to choose the light side. And you can have a mixture of both factors, the one on the back of the chart and the one on the front of the chart. Well, then it is a battle for the soul. Like you'll see my chart very soon, but I'll show you before that. So this is a star of Virgin Mary or Isis in the ancient tradition. So very motherly, loving, angelic star. It's actually in the uh, sign of the constellation of the Virgin, which is depicted as an angel. And it's in the wings. Actually, as well, the head of the Virgin is from zero to seven degrees liberal current in this incarnation i mean in this time of history so this is also a very spiritual side uh very angelic the heart of the virgin um, also vega is a very spiritual star it's angelic musical abilities uh, this is vega is uh it's uh, actually our whole uh, the northern pole changes and uh Vega becomes the northern pole in about seven, eight thousand years. It will become instead of the northern star, Vega will be the, the star where every all the other stars will take around. And that's when the earth is closest to Sirius on its path. That's when it's closest to its spiritual sister, to the spiritual sun, the spiritual sister sun of our sun is Sirius. So that's when people are more spiritually evolved. And Vega is directly related to that. Former halt, which is in, um, I'm not going to show you this, it's going to take us forever, but it projects at three or four degrees current to Pisces. Very spiritual star, the star of Archangel Gabriel. Healing star of love, of art. Again, hearts of angels. The net, five degrees Pisces. You see, and currently in Pisces, a lot of spiritual stars are, are projected. The net though is the constellation Cygnus, is a bird. It's also known mother of the universe constellation. Many people tell me that they have memories of 
uh, being you know, planet, uh, people that have their sun in Bennett or some important point, they have memories of being bird-like creatures, huge, and they say they're taking care of our planets almost. And they say they're like mothers. It says it's incredible motherly bird energy. <laughs> and so that's Bennett energy. But that's a very angelic, angelic energy again. And then Arcturus, 25 degrees Libra. Again, it's very close to speaker. The Arcturians, you've heard about them. They always talk to us as very positive for humanity, helping us. But Arcturus, I mean, this uh, very noble star, it's a star of nobility, there's nobleness in their heart. It projects currently around 24 degrees Libra. So you have something very, very energetic. And Akamar, Akamar projects currently. Akamar is from the constellation Eidanus. It's a river of life. And it projects currently at around 22, 23 degrees areas. That's where my son is. Thankfully, I have it. Otherwise, I'll be proper, which <laughs> that's a star of nobility. And it brings a lot of nobleness, kindness, higher motivations, higher, uh, you know, kind of higher vibration as well. But also it calls where Cephas is. So anyone who has their sun close to Akama or Sun on the moon, there is a powerful indication that they're battling the dark uh, Cephas, the monster, the well, but at the same time, there's a, a lot of nobility for them to overcome that. And there is, as I said, the heart of the Virgin. So these are parts of the sky that are highly positive. I hope you roll them down, the degrees. Oh yeah, Regulus and Aldebaran as well. Regulus is currently the last two degrees of Leo. Again, this is where the other monster is. Remember Hydra and the beginning of Virgo, the first one degree of Virgo or two, give it that um, or. You see, there is a monster behind, but if your sun or moon or ascendant is very close to uh, regulus at the same time, there's a lot of light coming from another archangel, powerful archangel star is the lion's heart there. There's a lot of, like I call them Gryffindor people. <laughs> They're like full of courage, fighting for the light. Usually despite they meet with a lot of monsters and with a lot of, um, underhandedness through the Hydra energy projected from the other constellation of Hydra, but they have this lion's heart, the, the lion to step on the head of the Hydra, the snake, you see. Where those things come from, the imagery pictures, lions stepping on snake's head, because regular the lion's heart is right on top of the snake's head. So such people might have such themes that are working and dealing with snakes and other dangerous, not real snakes, but Toxic or poisonous and dangerous people around them in confrontations. Are they going to choose the dark? Are they going to sell their soul? Or are they going to be the brave Harry Potter Gryffindor type? It's again Harry Potter combination. Regulus means Harry Potter, brave, the heart of the lion, and Hydra's head behind on the constellations. It's Voldemort. <laughs> okay. And Aldebaran, which currently translates around nine degrees Gemini, give it two, three degrees to four, two, three degrees after that. It's actually is the eye of the bull. The constellation behind the Gemini currently is the Taurus, the bull, and it's right in the eye of the bull and the very auspicious star of Archangel Michael. They fight for the light. Those people still have support, divine support if they're in difficult situations, even though they'll still can, you know, meet a lot. If you're fighting for something, you have to meet a lot of <laughs> difficult stuff, but still there's a lot of light power there. So let's share with you a couple of charts. Let's go to the most, the usual suspects. Adolf Hitler, let's quickly see. We know that he's a shadow player. Let's see quickly out of those things that we talked about. Out of the, the shadow side. North node, south node, angular. Yeah, they're very close. North node, south node, very close uh, to mid heaven, to icy. Plus the south node, it's always opposite the north node, this is the north node, is conjunct with moon and Jupiter. So there is a lot of the south node, you say a lot of insecurity spheres that one meets. One meets their biggest fears and so on. Do they take the light side to the dark side again you know but there's 
two factors already. Ra to Ketu, very close to the angles, the moon with the south node, one of the demonic beings. Uh, then we have, what's the next? In, uh, invisible planets, Venus, Mercury, and Mars. Three invisible planets, they're next to the sun. How do I know they're invisible? I looked at this chart with the right program so I can see, you know, they're invisible when they're very close to the sun, Mars, for sure, Venus. They're invisible, a lot of things in the hidden. Very easy to do things under when you're hidden, when you're not visible, those three planets. Uh, more temptation than other times. You know, so we have three factors here. The next factor is, do we have Scorpio strong? Well, no, but there is a big, there is a story that uh, when Hitler was born, he did not survive the first 30 minutes. He was left as a dead baby, he didn't breathe. And 30 minutes after his exact time of birth, he took his first breath of air. And that's when actually it's considered that the horoscope starts, the first breath of air. That would make him Scorpio rising. Hitler looks to me way more like Scorpio rising as a character than Libra rising, especially Libra rising with the angelic star there, the star uh, Arcturus and the star uh, speaker. So I definitely believe he's Scorpio rising. I'm not saying Scorpio is evil. I mean, like my son is strong Scorpio. All right, but we're stacking on things. It's so invisible planets, blah, blah, blah. Do we have anything on those karmic points where the constellations meet? Maybe I will show you another chart. Well, look at that. The sun is right at zero degree Taurus where the Pleiades are. Uh, sorry, not the Pleiades, where the Cetus um, uh, monster is. Remember from this, from the last degrees of Aries in the beginning of Taurus is where the constellation of Pisces and Aries meet. Uh, very karmic pivotal incarnations. We choose the light or the darkness. <laughs> we know what we chose, but also the monster Cetus. So is Mercury. His Mercury is there, his sun is there. So we see one monster there. Uh, and then we see, what is it? Yeah, so we see quite a few things. The, oh, where is his Lilith? We didn't check Lilith. Lilith is in the sign of his sun, Mars, Venus. So very strong Lilith temptation and so on. So he doesn't have any of the light things to help him. Plus the sun is setting, the light is setting down. You know, you're choosing more like the darker side. Many times people are born when the sun is gonna rise by uh, primary directions, which is how you see how the life progresses. This is the most exact predictive method, which Lumen will be teaching in this primary direction course, how to see. So whenever by primary direction, the sun rises, a person can come out from a life on the dark side or life in a lot of temptation and difficulty into a life of light, into a life of more ease, into a life of the goodness. And oftentimes when a person is born after midnight, before sunrise, before sunrise, but after midnight, that such people would have the sunrise. So almost like they're on the last uh, moment of the last incarnation where they're still steeped into the dark and they would emerge into the light but you can see when this will happen exactly with primary direction. This is the most important predictive method for mapping out the light for 90 years. It's not done just for year by year, it really maps it out. So it's, if you wanna learn that method that the ancient use, uh, Roman is your guide, check out the course. But you see, for Kipla, the sun is rising. He's setting, it's gonna set here, it's getting into the darkness. Now let's look very quickly, Joseph Stalin. I just chose the first people that I thought that I know they're the dark side. So Joseph Stalin, let's see. We can't say if his North Node is uh, angular or no, but it's conjunct Jupiter, his belief system. And guess where they are? They're in the horns of the goat. You see it's in the constellation. Capricorn is behind, you don't see it, but at those degrees, the beginning of Aquarius, uh, it's kind of a, the horn god, very materialistic belief system he chose, which is communism, where God does not exist. The horns of the god, because Jupiter is there, conjunct the North Node. 
uh, which is again manifestation of demonic energy. And he put into a cult, the cult of no faith in God. You know, the horn gold destroys God. It's Satan, so to speak, the horn gold. I'm not saying people can't find it. They're a satanic in any way. They can be a cult and so on. But the, the, he might have had some, you know, there is some kind of very dark energy in his belief system between the horns of the gold, with Jupiter and Ketu, the uh, south node, the demon. Then he had the sun up right on the karmic nodes where Sagittarius, his sun is right in the galactic center with, oh, where the destructive and creative energies are and where the sting of the scorpion is. Remember that those degrees, the end of Sagittarius, the start of Capricorn is where, his, is where the sting of the scorpion falls pictorially, constellationally, poison. It's dark, one is fighting the dark side, but he chose the dark side in his case. Maybe there was a lot of idealism in him, I know. Actually, he was first really believed in God. He wanted to become a priest, this Jupiter with North Node. But, uh, but then he chose, he was very disappointed and he, he chose to, uh, to basically kill God. You know, he destroyed our churches and what was it <laughs> and so on. So there is this darkness here with Jupiter, the planet of belief, and the North Node with the constellation of the gold. If, if he, should he chose to follow a spiritual path, he was going to be extremely occult adept. So he's going to have very powerful occult adept skills. But also he has the tail of the scorpion. His sun is right on the sting of the scorpion, his Venus too. It's a bit hard, too many things. And his Mars is in the sign of Scorpio. Remember, we said that the sign of Scorpio also indicates those things. Um, and his Pluto, we said also you have to check Pluto, is very strong position between Pluto and Mars. Uh, he killed his wives, he tortured, he was a very violent person. He killed millions of people. And guess what? His Pluto is on the star of what? The star of gold, another dark position. He killed millions of people, he starved them to death. Pluto, the star of destruction, one of the darker sides, and we said you have to check Pluto, is in the star of destruction, although opposite Mars in Scorpio, the sign of death. Uh, it's like Mars, Scorpio energy, very strong, and although very strong, like death, murder energy here. Okay, very quickly, Charles Manson, North Node. I remember, this is the... the the, north, the nodes are connected to the demon energy. North node with moon. Ha, ah, very strongly. Guess where, Charles Manson? Between the horns of the gold, the beginning of Aquarius tropically. This is where the horns of the gold are. He was tempted by the devil and the temptation, and he went for it. Women were involved and whatnot. Of course, he was a CIA agent, if you know that. So he was serving some mammoth there with some, and look at that, Scorpio, stellium. I mean, Scorpio is one of the signs if you have sun in Scorpio in this lifetime or many planets, you're going through a path of being tempted, temptation. Are you going to resist it? How you use power, what you do with it? Um, very strong, very strong. And the nodes are close to the mid heaven as well. The eye see, you see. Uh, very, very close to the mid heaven. So we have a few of those. So we have one constellation, two the north node, three, four, five indications of possibility for such kind of darkness. Plus the ascendant falls at the beginning of Taurus, maybe even a few minutes earlier, he was born four or five minutes, where this monster is, Cetus, at the end of. Uh, areas tropically, the beginning of Taurus tropically. It's actually between Jupiter, between Aries and uh, Pisces constellation, where the karmic knots are, very pivotal incarnation for him to chose the dark sign. Look, another lovely guy, Jeffrey Epstein. Where is his? All right, his son is right on the gold, the horn gold, the horny gold. His son, so he was choosing a battle. Is he gonna succumb to those horny desires? Plus, he might have served some occult uh, 
as you know, uh, safe and sane to children and so on. And a lot of the politicians, they have to, they, they're indoctrinated into Satanism and the occult versus a game. And so on, this guy surely was at those ceremonies. It's just the sun is right between the horns of the goat, together with the north, with the dim, one of the demons, South Node, you know. And he was, uh, what can I say? His Mercury is there. Again, his Mercury is, sorry, uh, the sun is most. So on the horns of the goat, something, you know, the horn bafflement, basically. Ah, then he has, does he have anything to save him? I can't see anything to save him. Well, many beautiful constellations. Hmm. No. Ghislaine, look at Ghislaine. I think she's more evil than him. You'll see much more indications. He was a horny, one horny guy. But, and also probably doubling in the cult. Look at that lady. First of all, moon with South Node. Again, there can be more temptations or fears and insecurities she's dealing with. It's in the sign of Leo, where the Hydra projects, the, where the Hydra projects, remember, as I showed you. So Hydra is there. And um, her Venus and Mars and Sun and Mercury are within that area where the sting of the scorpion is. Remember the last degrees of Sagittarius tropically and the first two, three degrees of Capricorn is where the sting of the scorpion falls in the galactic center. So the very destructive energy plus very strong temptation, very poisonous energy, one can be tempted into the dark. One can be fighting a lot of the inner demons in their lifetime or they might be fighting some really powerful external forces that uh, um, sometimes, you know, someone might be fighting with the darkness. If, if they're good so and they chose the good path, it means they, they were in that darkness, they rose from it, maybe not fighting like physically, but they rose above it and they kind of cleanse from that darkness. She hasn't. Hopefully she still has. Plus look at her midheaven. It's again, and her Saturn and Jupiter. And the horn, again, the horn goat there. Very first horny energy, sexual temptation, plus a cult, something a cult, bafflement, materialism, strong as well that one serves to. Let's see another favorite figure very quickly. Oh, and Black Moon Lilith with Pluto here. Johnny, there, Johnny, Johnny. Is he good guy, is he bad guy? Let's see. Does he has indication of darkness? Well, his, oh, his Mars, Pluto, and Uranus. This is first a very violent combination, Mars, Uranus, Pluto. You can be abused or you can abuse others as well. I don't know which way did we go. Let's see a little bit, but that's a combination of violence. I guarantee, I bet my head, this guy has violent streak, uh, but that he can burst out. It's, it's just that maybe he was beaten as a child. I don't know. Maybe he was abused in some way as well. It, it's just a violent combination. Plus, he can be abused later on, and, but he can also be an abusee. And uh, so it is a possibility. Let's see, is there a lightness there to help him? Venus and Mercury at 25, 26 degrees, the star I'll go. His relationships is uh, total, you know, his relationship. He can go in a relationship where he loses his head, where there is violence, abuse. It's just very strongly indicated, I'll go there to lose one's head. And I'll go was Medusa, that there was an abuse there. She was abused. I cannot, again, and his partner, ex-partner, Amber Heard, also had Venus exactly there, 25 degrees, Taurus, I'll go. So there is a lot of temptation in relationships, first of all, but also can, and, and I'll go is connected to alcohol and drugs, where the name alcohol comes is from I'll go, I'll go, the evil spirit. So there is a lot of possibly losing one's head, drugs and so on, and relationships that are crazy. Um, let's see, Pluto is Pluto, what else is it doing? Okay, so we have the nodes, oh, one of the nodes, the south node is with the moon. Here another have demonic influence with the moon where there can be insecurities and where one can, Again, the, the south node is to lose one's head, like the south node was the dragon's tail that lost its head. 
Huh, well, there is a lot more indications for very pivotal, very testing lifetime, but we have one expiating factor for Johnny. And I do like Johnny. He's the, the bad boy you want with a good heart. His moon is right on the star of Vega. The star of Vega is around 14, 15 degrees in Capricorn. And it's one of the most spiritual stars. So his heart is a sweetie by heart. He has spiritual kindness there. There was a lot, there's a lot of violence and drugs and other things that uh, he goes to the dark side from time to time. But there is this thing, this very powerful star, Vega is kind of helping him, you know. Um, there's, there's sweetness there. So there's kindness and the angel-like. And uh, Vega is also the star of music. It's in the constellation Lyra. So he's a very good musician as well. But there is, I can say, he's like 50-50. The battle between the light and the dark with him, it's, uh, you know. But still there is some light. Look at Stalif and Charles Manson. There was any light there. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. Okay. Charlie Sheen. Oh, this dude is battling it big time. Okay, I just wanted to make give you many examples so you could learn how to do it. Uh, oh, where is Johnny's dead? Uh, here. His um, moon did it. I was looking. Okay, Charlie Sheen. I don't know why I chose him, but his ascendant is on the Pleiades. Okay, so that's the Weeping Sisters. His mid, his, uh, the North Node, the dragon's head, Rahu, is on the Ascendant. Again, more temptations in this lifetime. Uh, pivotal lifetime where you have to choose, you know, where there's a lot more challenges and uh, in the form of temptations. The moon is right on the galactic center, or right on the sting of the scorpion, where the fire sign is. So there is kind of a lot of poison and energy there as well. And the darkness is quite more for Charlie Sheen, I would say. Plus, look at the Mars. Mars is in Scorpio, very strong sexual energy. Plus, the moon on the sting of the Scorpio. Um, and Venus is coming close to... And his Mercury. Look at his Mercury is also on such a pivotal point, and it rules his whole ascendant. His Mercury rules is him. Again on uh, Hydra, which is also addictions, remember? Addictions, alcohol, and so on. Plus, uh, Hydra is connected to having to confront your inner demons. So his moon is on place of inner demons and outer demons. His Mercury that rules his whole horoscope. He's a, a big battle is leading in him <laughs> for poor Charles Sheen. Plus, his midheaven is on the horn gold. And he's a very horn gold. So we always look at moon, ascendant, ascendant rule, and midheaven. Look at where those things fall. I think Church kind of lost the battle more towards the dark of the spot. Well, the spot pivotal. Um, I think Venus here can help him. You know, it's in the it's in a nicer constellation in the Virgo behind it. Uh, I mean, even if you have such indications, doesn't mean you're lost soul or whatever, but it's definitely a lifetime when. There will be a lot of temptations where you define yourself where you're going on which side. So there you go, guys. Uh, I wanted to show, okay, maybe one last person, Florence Nightingale. Nightingale, first go. Sorry. All right. Florence Nightingale. Um, not sure about if her time of birth is correct. Very likely it is not. Um, but we have notes on the ascendant. So uh, we have Mercury on that one of those degrees. And it's the ascendant ruler if her time of birth is correct. So where Cetus is, the monster. So it's a very pivotal, and where the, the, the constellation of Aries, the Pisces means the constellation of Aries. So a big shift from water to fire, pivotal karmic uh, incarnation where you are karmic, where you are not in a big karmic knot in your life and you are defining yourself. Plus the sun and moon are right on very 
close to our goal. So there was a lot of destruction, devastation around her. She was constantly in war with sick and dying people, but look, she transformed it to such a higher level, to, to um, much more higher manifestation. Plus the rule of her ascendant is right on the star Akmar, to be noble, Akmar, and so on. I can show you something. Oh yeah, and I forgot to show, um, when you see invisible planets, look at just little maximum. One, two, three, four, five, just Jupiter is visible. Saturn is invisible because it's close to us and Mercury, Mars, Venus. Is Jeffrey Epstein? Oh, has she just Mercury invisible? Charles Manson, one, two, three, three invisible planets. It often shows guys, Hitler, three invisible planets, one, two, three. And so I just wanted to show you that. You want to see my horoscope? <laughs> Here it is. I have a big battle between lightness and darkness. My ascendant in Ra is right between the horns of the gold. Now you can see here properly. The horns of the gold in the beginning of Aquarius, many temptations, but I'm in the occult as well, but I never use, try never to use it for my advantage. Um, I have my sun, Mars, and Venus right between where the Pisces, where the fishes and the ram meet. The, the constellation Cetus, the monster is around here. I'm facing a lot of, it's like a karmic juncture for me. A lot of karmic, let's say, uh, a big, very decisive lifetime to choose the light or the dark and, and to overcome a lot of inclination towards temptation and addictions and so on. So that's been very tough, still very tough. My moon is right on Regulus. And my son is on Akmar, so that's what's probably helped me. It's a noble star, Akmar. My moon is on Regulus, another star, Archangel Michael. So I'm given light to fight with the dark, but it's right on Hydra as well. Uh, Hydra is there, you can even see here. It says Hydra on my moon. There's a monster, so I'm backing my inner monsters. I haven't battled with external monsters. Uh, people who have been very kind, very good, life has been tough. But, I, it's my own monsters and it's a constant, constant battle to, to the extent where sometimes I cry daily when my inner desires and monsters are so powerful to calm them down. And then I have the rule of the ascendant on the head of the Virgin at the beginning of Libra here. So that also helps, thankfully. Uh, and so, yeah, and then, then I have the nodes, north and south node on angles, again, the demon's head and demon's tail. And the north node is with the moon. So very strong desires and patience. And Pluto is opposing all my planets, Sun, Venus, Mars. So it's not all flowers and roses here, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least I have two light constellations, regular star and Akmar, Akmar star. Uh, and the uh, virgin a little to, to lift me up there. <laughs> Otherwise, with all this out of darkness, so <laughs> I don't know, I'll be astral cloud crowd or something. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you that and maybe you find it interesting also to make homage to my incredible teacher, Roman Corlett, who I constantly learn incredible things from. And if you want to learn with him, I put the link for his previous course that I talked about, that I demonstrated. And I didn't talk a lot about a lot of things from that course. That was just 5% of his course. But you can find so much for yourself. And please, if you want to join him for his new course, oh, watch it after it's been recorded, Primary Directions, the most ancient predictive technique. Thank you. I love you. And bye.